Hi, I'm Lindy Warner. I'm Public Information Officer here at Kalamazoo County's Health and Community Services Department. And I have Sheriff Fuller and Health Officer Jim Rutherford here today to answer a few questions that we know Kalamazoo County has. So Sheriff Fuller, starting with you, what's going on operationally with Kalamazoo County? Well, operationally, we're noticing that the traffic on the roads is a lot less than it has been. So it looks like people are taking this very seriously uh, as we need them to. Uh, I can tell you that uh, a lot of essential services are actually working right now and that uh, while some of the buildings are closed, like the courts and some of the uh, public spaces, uh, a lot of things are still going on. Uh, so we know that Senior Services and the AAA here in Kalamazoo Area Agency on Aging are making sure that Meals on Wheels is continuing so our elderly are being fed. On top of that, we know the schools are out feeding the children right now, making sure that they and their families have lunches. And uh, so they, they'll continue to do some of those things there. You know, today on my way in, I noticed the smell of a bakery. They're baking bread right now. So food is still being made and it's gonna be delivered. And I'm gonna ask the people not hoard or start panicking about food supplies because we have a robust food chain supply in this nation. Remember, we grow and we bake and we make most of our own food right here within the United States. And those things are still happening right now. Perfect, so tell me, can you, what services, um, you mentioned a few, but what services are um, happening right now? Uh, there are a lot of different services, especially in the law enforcement community, the fire community, the EMS community, that continue. In fact, they all continue, but they're gonna be at different levels. So when you call 911, a couple things. If you could advise the dispatchers that you may be uh, somebody that has signs or symptoms of a infection or something you're battling right now, please relay that to the dispatchers. They will relay it to the uh, first responders. Our first responders really want to take care of our community and we need to help take care of our first responders. So I'm just going to you do that. The other thing is too, when you call for a police report, what we've done is we've changed the priorities. We've made it clear that if something is not progress, you may get a phone call from a police officer or a deputy as opposed to someone showing up. It's not, <clears throat> excuse me, not in progress, uh, and it's not a violent crime, is what I'm talking about. But still, when it's a 911 emergency, we're coming. So please make sure that you're calling when you need to. So tell me, what is your recommendation if someone has um, if their status is an immigration status or if maybe they have a warrant out for their arrest, should they be seeking out help if they're sick or if they're in assistance, um, in need of assistance of some kind, should they still seek out help? They should and hopefully uh, during these times people will recognize that all of the jails in the state of Michigan have worked to uh, bring down their numbers of people inside their jails. Uh, they've worked with the courts. Uh, we have done a lot of that already. And so what we're looking at is essential arrest, meaning somebody with a violent crime uh, warrant, somebody who's committed a violent crime, drunk driving, uh, drug driving, all of those arrests are gonna continue. But if somebody's with a bench warrant, say for something uh, like a uh, no dog license, and there's a whole list of non-violent bench warrants, what we're gonna do is give you the court information and make sure you report to the courts when the courts actually open back up. That's what we're working on right now. But please, yes, if you need uh, em emergency services or you need medical care, please seek that, regardless of any immigration status or any warrant status. Thank you. So, Jim, tell me, what has changed for public health, specifically the public health department and the services that y'all are now offering? So we want the community to, to remember that public health services continues, but we're really re-emphasizing our primary focus on addressing uh, COVID-19 and responding to that in unison with our, our federal and state partners. And so tell me also, what are the total numbers right now in the state of Michigan and then specifically within Kalamazoo County? So we know that we've got 809 cases as of this morning in, in the state of Michigan. And unfortunately, we have eight deaths. Um, in, the, in the Kalamazoo County, we have submitted 67 samples to the state laboratory. Uh, 24 of those have come back negative. The rest are, are pending uh, sampling. So 
what is going on in Kalamazoo County? Meaning, you know, there's more sampling, there's more test results happening on the east side of the state compared to what we're seeing here in Kalamazoo County. Why is that? Well, we get that question a lot, and it's a great question. I think you need to remember that uh, Kalamazoo County has about 250,000 residents, and some of the bigger counties or states or cities like the city of Detroit, city of Grand Rapids have three and four times that. So you're going to see higher numbers. Also, um, the larger uh, health systems have their, in, their own in-house sampling. So we're reliant wholeheartedly on the state laboratory for the testing that we've got done. We're working very diligently in unison with our, our health partners at Borges and Bronson, hoping that soon they'll be up to, up to speed and be able to do in-house testing within their respective labs. Uh, and then, uh, too, we're working uh, with the feasibility of looking at private labs as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's taking some time, but we're going to get there. So, does no positive here in Kalamazoo County mean we don't have COVID-19 here? Uh, absolutely not. And, and, and I would be surprised if, if we didn't. And, and that's what we want people to understand. Don't go about thinking that you're safe. Within, within Kalamazoo County. Assume that there's, there's the likelihood of positive cases. You can be symptomatic and you can be non-symptomatic. There's a lot of carriers that are all over uh, the world now. So just make this assumption that, that we have cases in Kalamazoo County. You're, you mentioned our partners, our hospital partners. Um, we have regional hospitals here. So what does that mean for when they're treating patients that may have COVID-19? What's that mean for us? That's a great question, and what it really means is that we may have uh, cases that occur in other counties uh, that are contiguous or, or they need special care that a particular health system is able to provide. So, you know, there may be the likelihood and there will be the likelihood that we have COVID patients that are diagnosed in another county that are going to be treated in, in one of our health care systems. Okay, so just some final thoughts here. Um, Jim, what should people be doing? What are, what are the steps that you want to leave Kalamazoo County with right now? I want my residents to know that this is real. Take it seriously. I don't care what age you are, uh, what socioeconomic status you are, take this seriously. You know, we, we, we preach this for so long, wash your hands. When you can't wash your hands, use sanitizer. Cough into your elbow, don't cough, cough you know, publicly. Face, try not to touch it. Um, space, try to keep at least six feet away from, from people and, and, and stay at home. And, and there's a lot of executive orders that have gone out that have helped to be able to accommodate that. We know that, you know, we're here and essential services has to continue, but if you can stay home, now's the time to do it. And so Sheriff Fuller, I'm gonna also leave it with you. Do you have any final thoughts for Kalamazoo County? You know, I do. I say thank you to all the residents who have been taking this uh, as seriously as it is. And I ask people for patience. I ask people to look out for one another and to make sure that if there's somebody you can help, uh, even through social distancing, please do that. Try to connect a little bit more right now on FaceTime or these other methods that we know exist in our world. It's important to stay connected, but it's even uh, more important right now to make sure our social distancing is our number one defense. But I just again want to say thank you to everybody for what you're doing so far. And uh, with patience and care, we're going to work together to make sure uh, that we take care of one another. Thank you.